So the thing about day trading is, well, you got to have your edge, right? But part of the edge is just the time you trade, what time you trade. Because in the morning, it's more volatile and way more predictable than either, even just 20 minutes sometimes, 5, 10 minutes into the open. Look at right here. So here's my trade versus all this junk. You never know. I mean, sometimes there can be runs like this, stair steps all the way down for the first hour. That's actually happened last week or all day even or half the day usually, but usually around between noon and two o'clock it reverses. But anyway, if you're going to try to trade in here, it's going to be much harder. So you, you are smart enough to take this long off the 200. You got to wait a half hour. Plus it would have came down here and probably stopped you out because it's under the low here. That's why they do that. So somebody takes it long here off the 200, puts their stop under the low. They wait 10 minutes. They're like, yeah, I'm doing good. All of a sudden, boom, comes down, stops them out by two pennies. It's happened to me so many times. And then runs all the way up where you wanted it to go anyway. You can see this lower high. But, uh, and plus, I mean, you, look, you're talking like three minutes. You make your 600 bucks or whatever you share size you get. I only got 750 shares on this. I wanted 1,000. I didn't get it. Or let's look at another one. Here was the trade on NVIDIA, but as you know, I was trading AMD. As you can see, I tried to trade it here short. It didn't go. It stopped me out by 10 cents. I took this little flag here. I was just trying to add to my uh, AMD trade. And, um, you know, it dropped again. That's what I was hoping for. It would drop down to yesterday's close, this dotted line right here. And so that was just a quick scalp what was that 25 50 cents maybe but um if you're going to try and trade later even now i don't even know what the hell it's doing right now so that in itself is an edge only trading here if you don't make any money you lose money or whatever you just say, oh, okay i quit or i quit for the day so you can or you can do what i normally do is well i normally scalp and all this junk and make my money back if i lose but you can wait till 11, 12, 1, 2 o'clock and wait for the reversal. Take a small share size and just let it run all the way back up to where it was, where it usually does. Sometimes it'll even blow out the top and keep running. And you can make out uh, your money back. If you calculate it out, okay, I lost 500 bucks. How much will I need in shares to make it back? You enter small share size as it starts going. You add, but you just let it just keep running. You don't scalp it. So trading only in the morning or on obvious reversals in the afternoon, knowing the patterns, support and resistance. I mean, that, that's all the edge you need. And having stocks that move, not penny stocks and things that are just popping up. It used to be just a few years ago, I'm thinking before COVID, on earnings, you would have stocks that ran, all kind of stock like Neo and Plug and I don't know, just all kind of stocks. Occasionally, DraftKings will run, things like that. They would gap up. You'd be like, all right, here, here I got five gap ups. And they would take off at the open, pull back, and they would just stair step up a dollar or so. You could trade. It doesn't happen anymore. It hasn't happened in years. So those are what I consider my edges. Trading at a time when I have an advantage over the market. So if it does make a move, it's going to be a good sized move where I can make money. It's not going to be chopping me up like this. And um, only trading patterns that I know and stocks that I know. And using the, uh, well, the most important one, using the SPY as a guide to what's going to happen in the market. And as I said on another video, I'm going to start trading the SPY directly. I call, I can... 90% of the time, I know exactly what the SPY is going to do according to its pattern and everything. The problem is I don't know what the stocks I'm trading are going to do exactly or when, but I do use the SPY as a guide. Like if this is what the SPY looks like and the SPY takes off, I'm going to assume NVIDIA or AMD are going to take off. 
but they may or may not. Or if they do, they might just run up here to the VWAP. So I'm going to start trading the SPY directly. But anyway, that's the edge. Trading at an optimal time, using the SPY as a crystal ball to know what these stocks are going to do before they actually make the move, and trading stocks that I know and patterns that I know only. Trying my best not to trade junk like this. Unless I absolutely have to, I'm trying to make money back and I'm taking 25, 30 cent scalps. But that's not a trading strategy. That's just junk trading. It's Well, that's what scalping is, junk trading. I'm trying to get back what I lost if I lose anything for the day. I like to try that first. I can't do like what TradeNet does. Mayor Brock just, oh, all right, well, I missed it today. I'm, guys, I'm down four grand. I'll, I'll come back tomorrow. I can't do it, man. I like to at least wait. If I'm not doing anything, see what happens. Maybe give it another try without digging myself a hole. That's why I scalp. 